Okay, 10 months ago, Samsung launched the Galaxy S9 phones, which didn't exactly set the world on fire, but the S10 should be different. And in this box, we've got potentially our first look at some of the ways that this phone is gonna evolve over its predecessor. Okay, to start with, a pretty standard cardboard box wrapped in an excessive amount of tape. This is quite normal for packages sent via DHL. I don't know why they do this. And inside we've got a bit too much bubble wrap. They've been seriously careful with this box. I'm not sure why. It is a clone phone. It also comes with a screen protector. But even though the S10 should have a super tall 19.5 to 9 aspect ratio, this is even too tall for that. The box looks pretty much bang on what we saw with the S9 Plus. Same rough dimensions, even the same fonts all the way through. And you just slip off the top and then we've got the interior. And this box feels really solid, it's really well designed. It's even got a subtle matte finish on it. The phone is on top, we're gonna come straight back to this in a second. But first of all, pretty much the standard stuff inside the box. This quick start guide is from a past clone phone. And this charger is probably, hopefully going to be revamped in the actual S10. I'm definitely hoping for fast charging speeds. It's an area where Samsung's phones aren't exactly on par. Got a pair of earphones and then a standard USB Type-C charging cable. Okay, onto the phone itself, and as with most clone phones, it's thicker and heavier than the actual phone will end up being, not quite as slick or refined, but there are a few interesting takeaways we can have from this. We've got almost stainless steel looking edges, kind of like what you've seen on the iPhone XS. I really like that, I think that looks pretty premium. But also the colour, you've got this deep ocean blue, and alongside a green and potentially a pink too, this is one of the primary colours the S10 should launch in. It's also pretty likely that we'll see some sort of gradient finish on at least one of the models, given that Samsung has been now testing them on their more niche devices, and, well, everyone is doing them. On the bottom, you can actually see the code name here, SMG9700. That is what we're expecting it to be. And taking a look at the side, a headphone jack, which doesn't necessarily confirm that it will be on the final phone, but given the amount of fun Samsung has made of Apple for ditching it, I think they'd be foolish to follow suit. Okay, then we've got the cameras, and this should be quite a significant leap from the Galaxy S9 Plus. The S10 Plus should be coming with a triple camera setup, with the same variable aperture that we saw on the primary lens with the S9 Plus, and the same telephoto to be able to zoom in two times. But with the addition of an ultra-wide, this brand new lens would capture a 123 degree field of view. Also, now that the fingerprint scanner has disappeared from the back, Samsung can shift the cameras back to the horizontal arrangement they had previously, which they introduced on the Galaxy Note 8. And in its place, we're hoping for an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner to be present in the screen of the phone. Which brings us to the front, and this is where you'll notice disparities to what the actual phone will look like. With the budgets of these clone phones, they can't quite reproduce the punch hole display that we should be seeing. But essentially with the S10, what you're probably going to get is a little cutout with either a single or a dual camera in a little pill shape in the top corner, kind of like this. Now, the clone phone's camera obviously completely sucks, but it was cool to see the different wallpapers that they'd created. Lots of focus on gradients and parallax effects, and I'm sure we'll see some new wallpapers when the S10 launches. Also, the skin on this phone isn't quite right. You might know that Samsung has launched something they call One UI, and this is probably what's going to be preloaded on the S10. And this will bring a whole number of improvements like less menus, redesigned icons, as well as software features like the supposed bright night mode, essentially Samsung's equivalent of Pixel's night sight. And this is genuinely something I can't wait to see. If you combine the software prowess of Google's night sight with the hardware prowess of Samsung's variable aperture, being able to open up the aperture to let more light in at night, you could get stunning photos. I'm just super excited to see it in action. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, if you could smash that subscribe button, that would really mean a lot to me.